Hello there. Well, today is one of those days, unfortunately, when I don't look good enough to be on a video. I had intended making a video for everybody today, but it's turned out to be one of those days, and you all know what I'm talking about. So, uh, I have an awful lot of paperwork to do because I'm making a website for a catch-up on COVID, after COVID, it's a literacy program, and um, um, so I thought between paying today, I would put all the paperwork and everything on my bed and get on with it now and then. Well, before I could turn around twice, I had the cats join me, and. As always, Monty, I've told you about Monty, my therapy cat, and he is sitting right on top of me. Um, one that you're looking at at the moment is Tigger. Tigger! 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 There. Smile for the camera. So there's Tigger. And he likes to be nearby, but, but not really close to me. Um, and here is Monty. And Monty is right here. And at the moment, he's decided that I need to be groomed a bit. Look, look at him. And he comes and sits right up, close and personal, and he sleeps there. And then when he wakes, he, he licks me and so on. And until I'm better, he will not leave my side. He is, as I've told you before, my therapy cat. So there you have it. Now, the story of Monty. For you cat lovers out there, we lived in a, a nice villa with a huge garden and I used to take um, cats that had been abandoned from the vets. So we had quite a few, shall I say, but I saw the photo of Monty in the newspaper. It was He was advertised and he. I just looked at him and I thought I must have him. So I said to my husband one day when I was in hospital, I'd seen the advert of this cat called Monty and I really want him. And he said, oh Angela, this is silly because you've got four or five cats, I think at the moment. Although as I explained to you, we had a big garden, huge space around that they could go off for the day and come back when they wanted, you know, so anyway, he said, no, this is silly, it's just too many. So anyway, I thought, oh, I was really sad about it. A week later, the photograph was still in the paper. So my husband said, oh, they probably put it in for two weeks. I expect he's gone anyway. Don't, don't, don't pursue it, you know. Well, I went for one of those tests at the hospital. Usually I, I drank the um, dye, you know how, how it goes. You drink the dye and then you go into what they call the donut, a, a cat scan, I think they call it in the UK. And um, look, I'm trying to get him so you can see him better. There you are. And um, anyway, I went this day and, and I went to pay for the drink stuff and she said, no, no. It's not that one today, it's a different one, so oh. So off I went and in for the x-ray. And it transpired that they were going to pump uh, barium, it's called, barium, in through my anus, up into my bag, and um, take the x-rays as that was happening. Well, I'd had an operation there, so... It was very tender, very sore, and they shoved this nozzle into me and pushed, and in the, I, I was 
going off towards the edge of the table, it was so painful, um, and eventually said, all right, no more force, no more force. And then all the stuff came out through into the back. Well, I was so weak then at that point that they helped me down off the table and I went into the toilet and I had to get empty this bag. Well, the toilet was too low down. It would have splashed out everywhere. But the hand basin was too high for me to reach to put it out through there. Anyway, eventually I had a go at it. It went everywhere. It went up the walls, on the floor, all around. So fortunately, for some unknown reason, I had pulled on a long skirt that day. What a blessing, because it was all down my legs. It dried white. I got down and took toilet paper and paper towels and wiped up all the floor. I wiped down the walls and I was so weak. But I know that they would have come and cleaned it up, but I just felt so ashamed, although it was not my fault by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, I came out and I made my way to the car. I was weak. Luckily, as I said, I had a quite a nice looking elegant skirt. If only I'd, somebody knew what was underneath. Well, I was, I felt so dreadful, I could not speak. When I reached the car, I was unable to speak. I just got in and sat. And my husband said, oh, I'll drive you straight home. On the way, I only said, Dave, I really want to see if I can get that Siamese cat. I've never had a Siamese cat. He just looks gorgeous. I really want him. And he said, OK, my love, if you want him, we'll go tomorrow morning. Well, we went in the morning and there was Monty, little sweetheart. He was in a huge cage. Um, it was fine. He had food, water and he had space and he was fine. There was, there was nothing wrong with it at all. But then the chap told me, Monty's been here for six weeks. I couldn't understand it. How could this gorgeous cat have been there six weeks and people come in and looking and choosing other cats? Well, when I had a close look at him, he's got one tooth here on the side. Let me see, sweetheart. One tooth that is longer here and it sticks down. You can't see it here, but it does stick down. And he'd obviously been crossed with another sort of cat because he's not the sleek, thin Siamese. He's part, what do they call them? Seal point. But he's so gorgeous. So anyway, we said, well, we'll take him. I put him upstairs and closed the drawer up there with food and water and litter so that he would get used to being in a new place. I, couldn't bear it if we rescued him and then he'd run away. In the evening I brought him down to get used to us in the lounge and he climbed on top of the sideboard and he sat there as if to say this is where I'm going to be and I'm not moving that this is I'm home and we've had him ever since and he's gorgeous he never went upstairs again he wasn't shut in from that day. He went to the garden, he came back in. He hardly left my side. And there he is now, all these years later, we're now in, the, in a flat and he's still with us. His story was he was with somebody first and then they had a dog and the, the, they didn't get on together. So he got pushed on to somebody else. And this, it was an old lady and I'm sure she was very nice. But um, she had Alzheimer's and then she forgot to feed him. And um, so when we had him first, he used to come and he used to want to eat off our plates. And that was because I think when someone came and gave her her meal, that was probably the only time he got a proper meal. So. 
Anyway, he doesn't have to do that anymore because he's got everything that he wants. And he has rewarded us so well. So that's the story of Monty. It was going to be about how I was getting on today, but no, it's not possible. I'll just show you our other little one who we found 15 years ago in the street dying. Now, forgive me, I'm not very good with uh, my camera work. Now, Lucky, Lucky, there, there, just a minute, I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to get your little head in, Lucky, Lucky, yeah, Lucky, I'm not doing very well at all, no, it's not working, is it, ah, Aha, she's moving around. There we are. Come on, Lucky. Yeah, she's she's old and she's tired, like me. And she... There you are. <laughs> she's rough. Lucky. Come on, then. Yeah, oh, she wants to go to sleep again. There we are. Lucky, come on. Come on, darling. There. Oh, no. <laughs> I got her at last. Okay, so that's a little brief look at Lucky. And now we're back to Monty. Isn't he gorgeous? I'm sorry, the quality of this video today is not good, but then I'm not good today. Uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Um, tomorrow, I'll probably be dancing. So, there you go. Goodbye for the time. Look after your little animals. They are worth their weight in gold, I think. Absolutely. <laughs> this is dreadful. There you are. There you are. Tigger. Tigger, say goodbye. <laughs>